Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Yeah, let's do some research. Research in Manoa. We like Manoa. We like research. We like all the agencies that do research, okay? Um, so today we have two special guests. Uh, one is Rashid Chowbury, and he's from Manoa. He's from the, wait. Pacific Council Applications Climate Center. Yes, he's a research scientist, which is something. He's a principal research scientist. That's something. And what do you research, actually, Rashid? Well, the... Uh, specific Cancer Application Centers is uh, the primary objective of this center is to generate ANSO-based climate information for the vulnerable U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands. Okay. So we, we produce uh, like as rainfall focused, uh, sea level focused, and tropical cyclone focused, and also define the hazard response plan based on, on those informations and disseminate this information to the Pacific Islands communities. Do you yes. find you're more popular now? Well, yes. I mean, everybody, Pete, you know, they want to talk to you and hear from you and get plans from you? Yes, we, we regularly talk to them. And if we actually, we, find, we found it that we are popular when sometimes we are late to disseminate our newsletter. When we are late, they call, they call us. You up. <laughs> they got to hear from you now. Where is the information? <laughs> so, so that makes us feel wonderful sure. in, in some cases. <laughs> And your friend, Joe Brinkley, is from NOAA. Mm -hmm. And uh, gee whiz, former Coast Guard, yay. Semper Paratus. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, really, that's what it's all about. We've been sitting at this table now for weeks talking about preparedness. Yeah, right. And the Coast Guard knows about it. So you went into, the, you went into NOAA, why? Uh, to get into the, this is a scientific base, kind of uh, serving the country, to use a scientific research type thing, it's, which NOAA does uh, a lot of scientific stuff. It's a huge organization. so. No, of course, a very small part of it. It's only 200 and, or 320 of us, off, roughly, at any point in time. So it's a very small branch of service, uniform service. Let me, let me sort of confirm the obvious. You guys do work together. You know each other. You see each Rashid, other. You Rashid. collaborate. How? Uh, so Rashad is kind of our sea level guru guy, and he prepares a uh, in-house uh, uh, rainfall seasonal forecast. So seasonal being three months. And I basically prepare another forecast that we basically, there's, uh, so we use seven dynamic models that we use to try to make a forecast. And then Rashad has a statistical model. It's a weather forecast. Yes, it's a sea, rainfall, rainfall mm -hmm. forecast. Okay. It's more than weather. I, I, heard you, uh, no. I heard you were going to say that. More no. than weather. It's, it's, it's uh, climate, not really weather. Climate. Yes. What, I mean, what, aside because, from weather, what is there in climate? That, well, it's a, we are, we are, what we are doing, we are focusing all on seasonal time scale. It's not like the weather folks that from 3 to 21 days. We are far beyond that. So when, when you go to that threshold, 3 months to 9 months or 1 year time scale, it's actually for large under climate. It's, it's, it's a horizon thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like this program on BBC that says Beyond 100 Days. That's the name of their news program. And what they're really telling you, and I think ThinkTech could tell you the same, is they're not looking at their shoelaces. They're looking into the future. Yes. They're looking at sea changes in a larger sense, right? Sea changes, I got that from the Coast Guard. <laughs> but we, we are slightly different from others because climate change actually is a, uh, the time scale is really longer than one year. It goes from one year to 100 years. But ours are more focused on climate variability on, on interannual time scale. That's the difference. So how, how far out do you focus? I mean, ordinarily, when you make your reports and you suggest your plans? Usually three months to one year. And it ends in one year because you really can't make an accurate yes, forecast Yes, that's one of the objectives. And we are working with the, on climate variability, not really climate change. Also, the, which we mean that's variability with, within one year or, or within a certain time cycle, like uh, uh, three months or six months like that based on the ocean and atmospheric changes. What's the difference between climate change and climate variability? Well, variability is that you say, for example, this year you are having some weather and some anomaly on the weather atmosphere or ocean system, but it doesn't mean that this is done forever. Next year you might have something very different. You may, next year you might even get back to normal. So this is what we try to mean variability. And change means it's already changed from one stage to another stage, and it's not coming back to the previous stage anymore. 
does change. Well, from all this, can you draw long-term changes? I mean, for example, can you tell me how over, or just between us, just between us, can you tell me how over a long period of time the climate's going to change? Is it going to get hotter? Well, that's why there is a probability <laughs> forecast. That's why there is uns <coughs> excuse me. That's why there is an uncertainty. I mean, it's very difficult, but people are doing that, and we do not know and not really have any data to verify those information right now. But the future will tell. I mean, how uncertain, how skillful those forecasts are. But at this time, the probability forecasts are at least giving us a sense that's what's going to happen in future. Yeah. Okay. That's well, it. we go one one leg at a time. So question is, what data do you get, do you need to do your work, and where do you get it from? I heard, I heard something about seven, mm -hmm. seven charts coming from NOAA. Is that it, or is there more? No. Well, uh, this is part of the story, what, what Joe says. First, uh, the question you asked him, that how we work together. As I said, we are working on climate variability and change focus, although change part we don't really touch much is about climate variability. The success of climate information is totally depends on, I mean, largely depends on how successfully you can disseminate this information to the target group, to the stakeholders, to the people. I mean, you have to, you need to train the people to really take your focus, because this is something different. People are not really aware of it. So the major component of, of a successful story depends upon how quickly, how timely, how smartly you disseminate this Yeah, right, sure. I mean, there's, a climate, there's a climate change if it falls alone in the forest. Yeah, anyway, and that's what Mr. Joe does. He is, yeah. he is, he is the person who really takes this information. Uh, and goes to the public. To the public. You're the outreach then? Yes, yes, I am the outreach. Okay, outreach. Well, tell us how you do that. You know, come on, Think Tech, this is a big thing in terms of outreach, but what else? Uh, so we have a monthly conference with uh, we try to have at least one person from every affiliated island that we work with, like Chuuk and Kwajalein, places like that, to, to call in every month. Uh, and we basically do like, this is a conference call with them to find out like how everybody's doing, what, what, like give us a, a basically in-house report of like what their weather was. Who's there? Excuse me? Who's there, NOAA only or oh, NOAA no, plus it, well, other it's, agencies? It's, uh, it's generally uh, WSOs. From weather, what, is, what does that stand for? Office, I think. Is what weather is. service officials. Okay. So basically, it's other parts of uh, branches of weather service. What is a weather service officer? Where is he deployed? Where, where do I find him? If I if I walk down, you know, well, I mean, every place had, has their own like little place to do uh, forecast. Agencies, you know, yeah, federal like, agencies. Like Guam is there probably the closest like weather service. Governments like, of forecast office that's there. Jurisdictions. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and they all have a weather weather service I, officer. I think so. Yeah. And if they don't, they should these days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. the Guam has pr their primary primarily their forecast kind of pr person that they turn to for the most part. But we use we have a, uh, affiliates in Guam that we use. Uh, for the most part of the outreach because there's so people are there they that, giving you information or are they getting information? They're giving us some information and then we basically disseminate like you're, you're, by, you're by, by what they give us we're able you're to make our own you're little, giving it uh, back to them. So, so you, so you take the, the data you get from them from them and you try to make some larger so, sense exactly, out of it yeah. and then you share that. The, the information that they give us helps us make our forecast okay. or confirm that our forecasts were correct or that's where you really need him, don't you? You really need <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. And if his funding dried up, you'd be a sad, unhappy fellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way things occur, as you say, mentioned, yeah, those are part of the National Weather Service. Yeah. And there are some NGOs, too. They, are, uh, they participate in our monthly conference call. They provide some information, like rainfall. We get rainfall data from them. Also, we verify with other sources, too. And based on those raw data, we prepare our Focused. What does rainfall tell you? I mean, obviously, there's clouds up there. They're giving up the water, and you make a, you chart them out, you map them, and you try to get a pattern on where those clouds are, where they've come from, um, and you probably have some data on how much rain, and how 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 big it is in terms of inches, uh, yeah. and all that. So you have various various data within the rainfall. Yeah? Yeah, various data, but the data that we collect and use is the tide gauge data, the rain gauge data. Uh, for sea level, we use the tide gauge data. For rainfall, we use the rain, rain gauge data. That's, there is a particular locations. 
and they say there's, that the rain is saved there, and they measure it, they give us that. So, okay, so you have, you have a, a spreadsheet, I always imagine. Yes. You, know, you have a spreadsheet and you're filling it in, somebody's filling it in, in your office, yeah. and putting it in from the, what do you call it, the, the, the rain gauge? Yes. Um, and and uh, you have a time factor working? Yes. You have a location factor working? Yeah, six working. hours. They normally take six hourly, I think. Six hourly rain, rainfall data, six hourly sea oh, So you're data. getting this all the time? Yes. And you're sending it to them? You have a way of sending it to them? Well, we're not sending their rainfall data to them. They are sending their rainfall data to us. Wait, who's they? So the other, the affiliated islands and... WSOs. WSOs. Okay. I mean, Office of WSO, we, don't, I, we do not know exactly who is doing that. Yeah, It's okay. coming from the Office of WSO. So you're getting it on a large geographical basis. Yes. Okay, and I take, I take it that rainfall data is uh, like the most important uh, factor, the most important mm, contributing scientific data for, for you to make your, your maps and plans. No? This is one of the most contributing. What are the others? Data. Sea level. Depending upon the, the, our, the islands that we are talking about is the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands, mostly in the, mostly in the North Pacific. And Let's do some photographs. Yes, uh, okay. can I, uh, for, yes. So these are one of those islands. This is, the, this is how the islands are located in their area. It's so low-lying atolls that even a couple of inches of rise of sea, sea level or uh, sea water, it inundates the whole, whole area, inundates the whole islands. What island is that? It's uh, Majuro. Majuro. Majuro, yes. Okay. So uh, what we... Uh, is Noah uh, out there? Yes. It is. Yes. Is okay. it like a WSO type? You're everywhere. Yes. You're a big agency. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So we, we uh, largely covered the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands, so mostly in the North Pacific, and one in South Pacific is, is American Samoa in South Pacific. And in North Pacific is Guam, Saipan, Micronesia, Federated States of Micronesia, RMI, Republic of Marshall's Islands. And Palau. You've, you've described most of the Pacific Islands here. It's, uh, there are other islands too. Oh, but these, these the, are the ones you care about. And these are the ones that are at great risk to climate change. Yes. So that the project you're working on, Rashid, right, is all about climate change in, pla in places, the Pacific Islands, which are at great risk to climate change. I would again disagree. We work on climate variability. Uh, climate variability. Uh, I don't know what made me say that. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> get my head back together, get accurate here. We'll be right back after this short break. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation, and we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Okay, let me just clarify that we're talking today about the role of the Pacific ENSO <laughs> Applications Climate Center um, and that, that acronym is PEAC, P-E-A-C, in reducing vulnerability to climate hazards. Um, and we're talking about the experience of the affiliated Pacific Islands in that regard in climate variability. Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what is an ENSO, E-N-S-O, what is that? ENSO means El Nino Southern Oscillations. This is this El Nino Southern Oscillation is a is a most important climate variability in that area. The climate in in the in those Pacific Islands are very sensitive to ENSO. During an El Nino year, usually the, they receive less than normal rainfall. The sea level goes down, 
And during an La Nina year, it's just the opposite. There is more rainfall, and sea level is higher than normal. So this is a, a, a most, I mean, the driving factors of, in the Pacific Islands. So that's why, I mean, we, our center has a name and it has a vision too. It's, that's why it's Pacific Islands Application Center. What's your purpose? I mean, how are, you, how are you helping the world? Yes, the purpose is that there are many answer sensitive islands, answer sensitive countries in the, in the greater uh, Pacific Basin. It's not only the, those North Pacific Islands. So if we can, if we can really uh, put an example, successful example, that this ENSO, if your climate is sensitive to ENSO, we have an opportunity also that to develop ENSO-based climate information, and we can generate that information well at least three to six months well in advance. If we have that kind of an, an, an advanced information, it's, it's much easier and, and it is doable to handle, uh, a, I mean, to generate a response plan and to, and to I mean, manage hazard management. Okay. So I live on Majuro. I, I know that every <clears throat> couple of inches is a big threat to me, and I know it's coming. And uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's coming. And it's already come, some of those islands. So I get your plan one day, and I said, hmm, this is a plan from Rashid. Uh, I mean, it bears your, your, or, your organizational name, which is the, what is, is that? The yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and uh, what does that plan tell me, and what, what can I use it to, to reduce my vulnerability? How can I, in turn, t make the plan into action? Well, yes, how does that work? That's a great question. That's a great question. That's why we are here. I mean, that's what we like to talk about, too. And that's the difference that we maintain from others. Well, what we have, we can tell them that this is an El Nino year. It means you are going to receive less rainfall than normal. But when did it start? This summer? Uh, it's going to be end of this uh, summer. May, maybe start, so start off. September 21st. Uh, May as end of September that's or the, early that's October. That's the equinox, isn't it? Uh, the, early October. The, the solstice or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> early October. So <laughs> early this October, is, okay. yes, this is this means that they are going to receive less rainfall. Their sea level will be lower than normal. The less rainfall means, in, I don't know. The less rainfall, rainfall is not a good thing, then. Not, 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 a, not even a good thing because they are, they are they save rainwater. For drinking oh, purposes, oh sure, on a practical basis, sure. Yes, there. This is the only they source of catchment, water. Catchment yes, water, yeah. Catchment. That's the only source of informations. Only source of rain, uh, water they have. So if we have less rainfall, that means it would cause sort of drought. And in 1997, we can explain it that they had to import water from mainland. Even 2015, they had to import water from mainland. So this is an a sort of very expensive and and also time consuming. They may not get that right. I mean, water timely because there's a, some bureaucratic procedure that they have to maintain and so call for those kind of water. It takes time to shift from California to but, here. That's but we're not we're not saying that if it doesn't rain much in a given El Nino year. Um, that that means that, the, that the, the, rain, the rain is like pent up up, up up there, it's pent up, and one day there'll be a storm and it'll be really extreme and it'll, it'll have all the rain that didn't fall before. You're not saying that. That's part of the story, but oh. we, we cannot say it right now. Okay. That happens somewhere, if not on that island, maybe other island. Yeah. That's, that's what we call climate extremes, rainfall extreme. That is happening nowadays. I mean, this is a sort of new science coming up. Yes. But uh, I, I won't really uh, stay much or discuss much about that because that's not part of the You're story. a weather scientist. <laughs> what, what, is, what is your PhD in? I did my PhD in water resources planning. Ah, so this is perfect for you. So well, Pacific Islands is perfect for you. <laughs> so okay, so I get your report, and it says uh, there's going to be say on El Nino year, maybe not so much rain. So you have uh, to save. So rain I have water. to save rain. You have to save it's, water. You're going to tell me to do that, and yeah, I have to find a way. If you cannot do that, make some arrangements so that we get you can get at least drinking water. And you have to take care of your other agriculture. Also, health issue too. Without if, when there is drought, there's a dehydration, some health concern. And also, it means that the sea level will be low, so coral reef will be exposed. That is another important source for fishing industry. 
So, so it affects them, everything. Everything. So giving them a warning that be careful, take care of that. Weather and water is central in the lives of the Pacific Islanders. Yeah, huh? that's yeah. what it is. Now, <clears throat> I heard Rashid mention the year 1997. 97. Something year. happened there. And you actually, Joe, are qualified to tell us about it. Uh, what happened in 1997? Uh, it was just a, a strong El Nino year. And uh, there's a picture, I think, uh, two. Two? This is, the, uh, this is in the Marshall Islands, where people are lined up for water rations that they were getting every 14 days. Ooh, that's so not too often, at, yeah. At that point, you're in serious drought conditions where every little drop of rainfall is important. I can imagine how that was I tough 14 on days, that's, that's yeah, not very yeah. much. So got, let's spin through the rest of your pictures so we yeah. get a handle on that. Can, can you go to number three? Yeah. As just you asked me before, the, well, how do they, inform, they use this information? This is one of the, one of the uh, stories that we like to tell here. That in, in, this happened in 2008 or nine. 2008. 2008, we told them that we, you are going to have an La Nina, which means high sea level, higher than normal. What, what do you call that word? La Nina. Oh, La Nina. La Nina. Yes. Okay. It's going to be higher That's than normal. That's different than King Tide. Just the, no, it's different than King okay, Tide. Okay, okay. But it's opposite to El Nino. So, so you don't have them both at the same time? No. no. Okay. It's normally... One this year? Normally one. starts with El Nino, then La Nina, then the cycle okay, okay. ends. So we told them like this. And what happens? Uh, this is one of the islands, and and they took care of that. They used the boulders, sandbags to protect some of the some of the important infrastructures. So that's how they use. We tell them, and when you, they have that information, they take necessary actions to protect their lives and properties. That's what it is. Scary. Let's see some more pictures. Is that it? No, that's it. Okay, those are the pictures. Okay, well, uh, we have a few minutes more, and I just want to do this on a larger scale. I mean, you're working with the Pacific Islands, but we all know that climate variability <laughs> yes. is, is coming other places as well. I mean, I went to Iceland recently, and it was really interesting, you know, that the, all the, what do you call it, um, the glaciers are melting. And the, and the tour guide says, oh, see that one in five years, that's gone. I believe him. That's climate really change. Happens. That's climate change. But, okay. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is a part, this is the water aspect and the weather aspect is really a part of the new science, as you say. Um, this has got to be, there, there have to be counterparts to you, Rishit, uh, all over the world, right? Studying it wherever, it wherever it takes place as a phenomenon. True. You have collaborators elsewhere? Well, we we closely actually the, all the all the islands are are we are clo collaborating very closely with them. This is one thing. Number two is that we are collaborating with uh, with Australians, Bureau, Bureau Bureau of Meteorology, the other islands in the South Pacific, and and this information actually cannot be generated without collaborations. So we have to collaborate with, say for example, CPC Climate Prediction Center. We use their data. We use data from the international. Uh, IRI, International Research Institute for Climate and Society in New York. We are using data from even WMO World Meteorological Organizations. Oh, we are using data from NCEI, National Center for Environmental something. So there are so many institutions inside the U.S. And even, growing. And growing. You, you mentioned some new science, and so what yes. that tells me is that uh, there is funding, there are mm, organizations interested in building the scientific base on this, getting more algorithms, more data, more reports, more maps, so that we can all understand in, in close time yes. what's happening. Yes. Uh, this must be very exciting for us. Yes, you. exciting from that perspective that we have to collaborate with the, with the institution inside the U.S. and also outside the U.S. Because climate, is, it doesn't have any boundaries. Sure. It, it can happen everywhere. And all have to work together, and that's the, only then uh, you can get a result. Yeah. And what we produce here, actually, there are so many centers are directly or indirectly involved, and we take so many informations from so many centers. That's uh, I mean, if I explain it, take a long time. But this is how it's working uh, without of, without of others' help, and also we we provide help to others too. How big is your center? How many people are involved? Well. 
Well, is, in terms of this is a research center, well, though we call it applications research centers, I mean, we do research only we, if we see there is, a, uh, there is a possibility to implement the findings of this research. I mean, the findings of, of that research makes sense to the people. Only then we go for that kind of thing, mm -hmm. just like the way we do here. So the research center itself is not very, very big. We have a couple of um, scientists is an outreach officer, there are two students uh, with us, and also we have a PI, principal investigator, mm -hmm. and also we collaborate with some of the professor of the Department of Atmospheric Research. Oh, in, within the yes. university? Yes, yeah. within the university. But our collaborators are all those National Weather Service office. In, yeah. in in each of the islands. Yeah, but what really interests me, uh, and I, I didn't hear you disagree when I used the word algorithm, um, is that you take all this data and you put it on the spreadsheet and you want to have a, a conclusion of some kind or at least a suggested conclusion. Uh, and so somebody has got to find a mathematical relationship between the, the data in this column and the data in this column, the data from one of those seven sources or more, and the data from other sources and put it all together. And that means making formulas and algorithms. You do that? I, I do that, but this is very interesting question. Is that you, you already mentioned a, a word correlations. <laughs> so, so those, those are the tricky things here. Sometimes all models, all models doesn't really correspond very well with the observed data, with the findings. In that case, we have to use some other techniques to avoid some models, to take something, or to disregard ah, something like that. The model is like artificial intelligence. Yeah, yes. You look at it, and you learn from the way it moves. Yes. So you're not necessarily um, you know, starting from the ground up, because you know what happened here, you know what happened there, now you can figure out what's yes. likely to happen. And that's the difference, uh, I mean, that's the difference of, of the Pacific and Applications Climate Center, because we have an opportunity to get raw data, and we have a chance uh, to verify the findings, not like others, because yeah. w what I say today, this goes to the field, to stakeholders within the next 15 days, and they will reuse it. Within two months, they will let me know whether I was right or wrong. So that's, that's fun. That's, that's Are you going to be the guy, Joe, that lets them know whether it's right or wrong? <laughs> no, no, that's not me. It's the people that we give it to. They'll call and let us know how so, badly we did or how good we did. The national, what is it, NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration. Administration. <clears throat> and my question is, you know, it must be changing. It, it must be perforce changing within its own organization. And to deal with the likes of this research, you know, uh, and uh, the demands made by agencies, um, you know, like like uh, this research, and <clears throat> and it's got to be. It's it, ultimately it's a governmental organization, so it's got to be sensitive to government and budgeting and all this. What do you? How do you see its role in moving ahead? You know, um, you know, uh, and this kind of science. What's its role? Just providing data, or is it more? Well, with, I mean, NOAA is a, the weather services specifically are more about, uh, they're not near as much into, uh, excuse me, they're not near as much into um, scientific research like what Rashed does. They're more like into like applications to like, like the prediction of like hurricane sort of thing. So like, they're, they're not really researching as much of uh, hurricanes as much as they are figuring out how to predict them. So it's not like we're not researching an actual hurricane as much as they are just the, the track sort of situation going on. So I'm not really sure exactly how to answer your question. Well, what I, I get it's, it's is a big, it's a big uh, question with a, probably a, a very it's long It's a policy question. Exactly. I'm asking a policy question. Well, I'm, I'm just, let me just uh, ask it this way to say you, you do foresee, you and your role do foresee a long-term relationship uh, with the likes of Rashad, Rashad, Rashad and um, his kinds of agencies here and elsewhere, sure. you you know you couldn't you need him, um, and he's committed to you. <laughs> it's not just casual. <laughs> it's not just short term. <laughs> this is part of your you know research career going forward to have a relationship with Noah. Am I right? Well, well, yeah, Noah is 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 doing a great job in this area, especially atmospheric and. Oceanic science. Yeah. 
So, uh, I mean, definitely they need also uh, research, different types of research to find out new areas. And I think I, I, that's why I'm here, uh, just uh, doing that kind of work right yeah. now. Although I belong to the Joint Institute for Marine and Atmospheric Research, yeah. University of Hawaii. It's a specialized area. But the nature of my job is to provide information to mm. the National Weather Service, mm. NOAA. I envy you. I envy you both. <laughs> Different reasons. <laughs> thank you very much, gentlemen. Rashid and Joe, thank you for coming down. I hope we can do this again. <clears throat> We're behind you all the way. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> thanks for having us, Joe. Thanks. Thanks for having us.